All right, so today's video is going to be just a little bit different. I was browsing YouTube, sitting where I normally sit in my room with my fiance, and I scrolled past a video, that, a clip that I have seen before, but I scrolled past it again, and I saw it, and I really, really wanted to make a video about it. I've seen some people talking about it, but I haven't seen anyone really uh, resharing it. There are some people, I'm sure, that are resharing it. A clip of Michael Jamal Brooks. Michael Brooks, uh, the late... Majority Report contributor, he also had his own show that was very, very popular. Michael Jamal Brooks talking about Israel and Palestine. The clip is incredibly powerful. It speaks volumes. It's just the best take I think you could possibly have on it. It's worded very well. It's worded much better than I would be able to word a take on this issue. And the thing that makes me the most sad about this is that he is not here today Right now, in this moment, you know, and he does, he, he's done some very incredible work in other areas too, but it makes me sad that Michael Jamal Brooks is not here today to talk about what is going on because I'm sure that his voice would be incredibly powerful and incredibly appreciated by many when it comes to this issue. But here is a clip, an old clip, still very powerful, of Michael Brooks on Israel and Palestine. Hi. Hi. So my first question, um, it says on your Twitter that you're Jewish. Am I getting this right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it the right Twitter? <laughs> on my Twitter bio, it says I'm Jewish? No. Also, I'm, I'm not going to, I promise you, I'm not going to interrupt much more after this. It's just, I, I just, I love, I, I just, I love his sense of humor. He's just, he's, he's so happy. He's just. He's just got that sense of humor. He just he, He's a guy that makes you smile. He makes you smile no matter what. No matter what he's talking about, the man knows how to make you smile. He's just a, he just has joy. But like in your tweets, I just, I don't want to be wrong. I, yeah, I have Jewish background. I'm just okay. trying to think of. Okay, uh, so as someone with a Jewish background. Yes. How do you feel about Bernie's plan for Israel, especially as someone concerned with foreign policy. I love it. It's an absolutely necessary. My Jewish values teach me to oppose apartheid. There it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Could you beautiful. elaborate, please? Absolutely beautiful. I mean, there, there really isn't that much to elaborate on. I mean, it, have, has anybody ever been not only to Israel, but also to the, yeah. have you been to, have, but, been to the West Bank. have you been to the West Bank? Have you been to Gaza? You went to Gaza? I went to the border. Oh, okay. But not to Gaza. You can't be in Gaza. Well, you, no, I know people who have gone to Gaza. You could definitely go to Gaza. Um, so for me, my politics are built on a base of you know, economic justice and actually really like anti-racism, in some ways as distinct from some of this sort of woke stuff in a way. But when I was, I was already, look, I grew up, you know, I was pretty connected to left politics, so I always knew growing up about the travesty that was the human rights situation there. And I knew that people had think, people I admired, like Nelson Mandela said, you know, South Africa is going to not be properly free until the Palestinians are free. In 2006, I believe, I, wrote, I read a piece by a guy named Tony Jutt in the New York Review of Books who was a really important Jewish scholar. And he just said, like, the argument was that like, literally this is childish. Like the idea that you have an ethno state or a religious state, if you're committed to any type of broad-based social, economic equity and civil society, it doesn't work. No matter how justified, right? Of course there's justification because of Jewish history for Israel. There's justification for Kurdistan because of Kurdish reality. There's, there's justification for Pakistan. It's notable that Israel and Pakistan are both disasters. Israel not in the sense of, you know, look, if you're a European Jewish background, you have a nice life there. If you're not, you are, even inside 67 borders, not a fully equal citizen. And the situation in the West Bank is, I mean, it is literally Jim Crow-like, and Gaza is, I mean, it's, it's just an atrocity. So that's not something that anybody can reasonably ask me to support. And I understand, you know, 
yeah, there are some actions from some Palestinian groups that you know, we can condemn. In fact, those have not even really been in any way seriously in play since like 2003. And I've been sitting here fidgeting, trying not to pause the clip, and I'm, I'm going to make this quick, but just, I just, I, I just, I really, he is missed. Michael Jamal Brooks is very much missed. When we talk about, you know, look, and the apartheid word specifically is both used by people who were crucial in ending apartheid in South Africa, like Desmond Tutu or Ronnie Casrols, who served as intelligence minister under Mbeki, who I've interviewed. And the other main people who use the apartheid word are Ehud Omer and Ehud Barak. So it is what it is. And I don't support second class citizenship and uh, occupation and sieges for anybody, no matter who they are. Are you not concerned about the binary between either condemning Israel entirely um, being like also a stance that a lot of like very strong and notorious anti-Semitic people agree with versus like, you know, seeing this as more of a complex issue where it is wrong what's going on and that there's also a way to do this that Israel still exists and is supported? Jesus Christ, that was, I mean, I'm, I, this is my personal opinion on it, but I feel like that was a pretty loaded question. That wasn't, uh, I don't know who's interviewing him here, but that I feel like that was a extremely fucking loaded question. Uh, not great. But I just, again, I'm going to make this quick so I can keep playing the clip, the clip, excuse me. What would Ben Glebe, and if you didn't see my coverage of this, Ben Glebe, TYT, said Israel is not an apartheid state. <clears throat> What I just what would he think about this clip? I would love to play this clip for Ben Glebe. I, and I should have honestly I should have presented this clip when I did my coverage of Ben and uh, TYT the other day. Again, if you haven't seen it, definitely go check that out. It's just pro-Israeli propaganda. I would really love to see his reaction to this clip. This clip specifically of Michael. So, so it's not a complex issue. That's the big thing. It's yep. super simple. There's one group that has enormous power. It's the most powerful country in the Middle East. It's backed by the United States. Yeah. It acts on another population of people with total impunity and is never held accountable for anything. So there's no symmetry in the relationship, period. And just as like a thought experiment, IDW people, if we know that if somehow a population of Jewish refugees ended up in West Bank and Gaza, and an Arabic government in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv had an open air prison in, in what, you know, Jewish Gaza, which they bombed with white phosphorus, they killed civilians indiscriminately, and they had no uh, provisions for medicine. They had an embargo that blocked food, that the electricity wasn't running, that there was an over 48% unemployment rate, life expectancy and malnutrition statistics were horrifying. The, uh, one of the major uh, policy makers in this hypothetical Arabic Palestinian state said, we need to put those Jews on a diet. In the West Bank, there was another Jewish area where there was a little bit more autonomy, but there was regular Arabic settlements where they pulled up the Jewish farmers' foods, they terrorized them with rocks, the security forces broke children's bones, and they couldn't drive their own roads. We'd all have no problem understanding what that was. So there's nothing complex about it. The second part of your question, it's, it's a pure asymmetry relationship. And the question is rights or not. So that's it. It's not complicated. The second part of your question. So beautiful. I love at it. At this point, there's always been, there's always going to be crackpots who are anti-Semitic who condemn Israel. That's not what drives the movement, it's particularly in the United States. If you work around most people who are concerned with this issue, it's actually populated with a lot of Jewish people. The real question we have to ask is why is it that APAC is hosting a information minister for Slobodan Milosevic? Why is it that there's relationships between the Israeli government and far-right parties in Europe? Why is it that Benjamin Netanyahu's son is posting borderline alt-right memes? <laughs> why is it that Israel is an alt-right state even though it is from the descendants of the victims of one of the greatest crimes in history? This just this clip um, this clip makes me think about sat very sadly after Michael died Sam and the majority report crew 
went live with a show honoring Michael. And if you haven't seen that on the Majority Report channel, they did a big show in his honor. They had people on to talk about it. It's incredibly real. It's very powerful. It is one of the most real things you will ever see when it comes to any political commentator, political news, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And uh, Sam was telling a story about one of the first times he met Michael. Uh, he said David Pakman recommended him, and he said that uh, Michael told him that, you know, he wasn't always, you know, too great on details when it came to certain issues. And Sam was kind of, you know, it was kind of a joke for him, and he was kind of joking around. And he was like, you know, he wasn't always super great on issues, but, I mean, when it came to certain things, I, Michael was fucking incredible. And that's why he's so missed, especially when it comes to something like this, on this issue specifically. Incredible. He, he just, he knows his fucking shit. He knows it so well. He knows exactly what he's talking about. He, 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 he knows. He has his mind made up. Just, I, I, I look up to this man so much. That's a serious I'm question. gushing over and that's here. that's inseparable from the racism of the project, which goes back to the first part that we have to solve. But thank you. Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> and I am serious about it coming from Jewish values. Like, Tony Judd, my reading to the extent I do, which I actually do have some connection to that in a religious sense, it's unacceptable for me. I but agree with you. Yeah, no, I, I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll <laughs> but it's not complicated. It's not. It's not complicated. It's something that was the basis of when I was going over Ben Glebe and TYT's coverage, or, well, Ben Glebe's coverage on TYT, I guess, uh, because there were some that were saying I was framing the issue in a disingenuous way, I guess. But it's not a complicated issue. Michael Brooks, fucking incredible. I love that clip. I love that clip so much, and I think that that clip is especially... Uh, or I guess more effective even now, more so right now than it was uh, whenever that was. I, I, I was having a little trouble finding when that was actually that interview took place, so I don't want to give like a wrong date to anybody. That's going to be it for the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, press that bell, turn on all notifications so you guys never miss an upload.